Hi, my name's Stan, and I have a problem. My shop's too cold. I've tried other ways of heating it, but they all leave me wanting. So I thought, how can I make it hotter in here? A wood-burning stove will not fit. I don't want to have fire in the shop because there are a lot of things in here that are really flammable, mainly chemicals. But then I thought, what if I can burn wood outside and move the heat in here? I don't really know anything about plumbing or HVAC systems, but I can do math, and I think there are formulas for lots of that stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing. I got a couple 55-gallon drums on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap, and a YouTuber whose name I'll find and put up here did a great video on how to make burn barrels with secondary combustion. Secondary combustion, it's when the smoke catches on fire and it makes it not smoke anymore and instead heat. The idea behind this is basically a tube within a tube. On the inside is the smaller barrel, which I'll have to make smaller. We'll cover that next. That has the fire in it. It sucks in air. The air becomes the oxidizer for the wood, which is the fuel, which in turn burns. But then it sucks up air on the outside gets it really hot and shoots it in to actually make it hot enough that the, the smoke itself catches fire. Let's do a montage of me cutting and welding a barrel into a skinnier barrel and putting it inside another barrel. That's a, that's a darn fine beat. Nice. Nice. People have been waiting for fire. Give them fire. That looks totally sketchy. So this is like only two logs. This is only two logs. It's just, it's amazing. It looks very sketchy. And so with my wife's full support, I decided to figure out how best to get that heat into the shop. Now there's a little more head scratching here because I needed to think of a way to have a lot of heat come in contact with the copper tubing without actually having it in the fire. So I sat down, did a couple more sketches, did some geometry. I'll have the heat go into the copper tubing and into the water. Super scientific. I think hose clamps would be a good idea. I wanna be a YouTube scientist. The burner was putting out a lot of heat, but not a lot of it was getting into the water. So I need to learn how to work with copper tubing better. So you sand it and then you put this stuff on. So here's my first attempt soldering ever. Oh, oh, oh my God, new skill. For anyone who's a plumber, please don't be offended by this. Okay. So I bolted the heck out of the copper things to keep them there. It looks prettier too. It even looks almost like I made this thinking it would work. It worked, sort of. It definitely got the water hotter, but not hot enough that I was gonna able to move that hot water into the shop and do anything with it. So I made this cool, grim, dark looking thing. This is the third rendition of the water heater coil. It's gonna get covered with soot, which I, I don't think is good, but I don't think it'll be so hot that the solder melts. Maybe it will. That could be really bad. We'll find out, I guess. Now the fire could definitely be bigger. I can definitely make the burn more efficient. But right now, the water coming out is at... Keeping in mind this is at a rate of 15 gallons per hour for a pump that's rated at roughly 10 times that. 113. And even hitting a high temperature of 138.6, I can work with that. So this is where I'm gonna put it. It's kind of messy, but it, it works a little bit. Uh, here's a radiator. And I just put some garden hose attachments on the radiator. So hot water in, cools, goes down, out, out into here. And then from here, out, back over to the, the burner, just, just like that. It should be pretty straightforward. One of two things is gonna happen. It's either the it, meaning the cistern, or all the water in the entire loop is either gonna get cold and stay cold which means I'm just not cranking out enough BTUs into the water to heat it to effectively warm my shop. That's possible. The other option is the water in the cistern gets hotter and hotter, keeps getting heated, comes back. The radiator can't keep up with how quickly it's getting heated and 
then it gets too hot, you get steam, yada yada. That's a good problem to have. If the water's too hot, add radiators. If the water's not hot enough, add more copper coiling. I've, I already did that part. So let's, let's see how this works. It just dropped to 22 degrees. This is the first test of the water loop with no control hardware or logic or anything. And to my shock, it kind of worked. It actually works. I even took a little video to put on Instagram. This thing is legitimately heating my shop right now. <laughs> the water goes in, the hot water comes out. <laughs> come on, come on. Check out the science. The water goes in to the radiator, and there's a fan, and then it goes out, and ooh, ooh, it's nice and warm. It's nice and warm. It's actually warm in my shop. I gotta take my coat off. It's toasty. It's freaking toasty. I have a Bullcock servo. Here's a checklist of things I need to figure out how to make, like how to connect a silcock valve to a servo. It's also referred to as a ball valve, but not a ball cock valve because those go in the toilet and sound like potty humor. But I eventually was able to make something, even got it to work a little bit. I designed up a wiring diagram using the Easy EDA software, even though I wasn't sending it out to be wired, it just made it easier. Did some diagrams and schematics, turned this mess into this beautiful product that will monitor and control the other product. I think this is gonna work. Let's turn the pump on, slowly open the valve, get a quantity of water. You can see how many pulses the pulse generator generates. Fire, pressure, electronics, water. We've got it all, all right? Zero pulses and just measure this for a while. It's a lot of pressure. I'm gonna do that until there's like a couple gallons in there and hope I don't get water all over my nice little circuit board I made. So that's how fast the water's coming out. I probably have more pressure than I need, though I also have a lot of resistance I probably shouldn't have. So how many pulses was that? Cool! 3,119 pulses, 19.9 pounds. Now I could accurately control the flow rate with the ball valve. That should be all the way closed. Now let's test if it's really all the way closed. It's closed, all right. 149. So it starts opening really at 142, and it should get, you know, more and more violent as I open it up more. Nice. Off. So we've got control. Let's put some temperature monitors on this and give it a nice web interface. Can I explain this in a minute? Let's go. I made this to measure the Shop Heater 2000. The water starts off here, measures the temperature. It gets pumped, and I can measure how fast the water is getting pumped, and I can control the water with the ball valve. It gets hot, that's how much hotter it gets. This will be the temperature after it gets hot. This will be the temperature change when it goes through the radiator, giving this temperature, and oh my God, what can I do? I can graph them. And we should ideally have the red one should be hotter than the blue one. And the purple one is the temperature of the reservoir, but there's more. This is actually the delta. We, if the temperature of the fire, delta, is higher than the temperature of the radiator, delta, then the, the cistern, the reservoir, should get warmer. And if it's vice versa, it should get cooler. And that is gonna be how we monitor this system. Go streamer Dan. So the project was going along really well. So I thought. Then I decided, oh, I'll share it on Instagram. <sighs> it didn't really pan out the way I thought it would. People apparently thought it was neat, but I drastically underestimated the wood-burning stove community. They're intense. They are an intense group of people. There were the normal amount of snarky comments, but then it started to get personal. Messed with my head even a little bit. You obviously don't understand how heat works. Absolute waste of time and money. What a cluster party. Fuck. Just put the fireplace in the shop, you dick. Stick. So Lousy. Dude, just get a stove. That's not heating anything, buddy. This is the most crackhead stuff I've ever seen. Show me how to heat a garage with the most amount of effort and waste you possibly could. Him, hold my white claw. Holy shit, how? you are boring. Gosh darn. Oh, pathetic. Dude's so proud of himself for building a lousy, unreliable hot water radiator. Your project is by far the most pointless flex of the week. And this, kids, is why you shouldn't be on social media. I suppose it makes sense that they're intense about uh, wood burning inefficiency because, well, you know, if they're not efficient, they don't heat their families. 
I decided to up my A-game. Can you up your A-game? So what was some of the main feedback I got other than um, idiotically inefficient and things like that? Well, uh, a lot of safety concerns. So I figured I needed a base to put this thing on so it wouldn't fall over. It's pretty light. So I made a triangle. Now, I just simply, simply pick up the monstrosity. I put it here. There we go. Efficiency. Everyone said you're losing so much heat out of the top of that. And I thought, you're right. Thank you. The burner cone is now wrapped. <laughs> this is even fit. It's wrapped in ceramic insulation. I put some aluminum flashing on it just to, you know, keep the insulation from getting wet. I fabricated. Again, it's horribly welded, but it works. So that should keep the heat in there better. My temperature deltas should be a lot higher now. I hope it's not so high that it quickly turns to steam, but I don't think it will. But if it does turn into steam quite quickly, and there's not a lot of heat coming out of the, uh, the smokestack, I, that would mean I've solved my efficiency problem. I went all in on heater efficiency improvements while paying no attention to the radiator or any of the tubing. <laughs> Dangerously hot, but there's a pressure release. Oh, did something just break? So here's the temperature going up, 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 and I got a little worried. Oh no, the flow just stopped. Well, you've invested nothing in cooling efficiency or flow dynamics, so... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Catastrophic fire. Because the temperature of the cistern at that point was about over 150 degrees. That's how efficient it is. I started losing sleep over it. I, uh, I need to make a fan shroud. My pump overheated. My solder melted. So I went to work on improving everything else in this monstrosity so it would work as well as the heater did. Here's the reservoir. Here's the radiator. Oh my god, copper pipe and proper tubing. Oh, it's not garden hoses? Oh wow. The controller, flow meter, 12 volt DC pump. Let's see if that's powerful enough. I even fabricated a proper fan shroud for two 12 volt fans. Don't get me wrong, I still had problems with every state of matter of water, but eventually I worked the kinks out and it was time for a real world test. Let's start a fire. Need you? I started with something fairly humble and controllable. Okay. Mission timer. So we're two minutes in. Starting conditions. Outside it's a chilly, what? 19 degrees Fahrenheit. In the shop it's 35 degrees. This thing stinks though. Eventually, there'll be a surge in heat. Um, the water coming out of the fire is now up to 87. It's increasing 24 degrees every time it goes through the fire. And then when it goes through the radiator, it comes down to 75. The temperature is decreasing 13 degrees. The logs are starting to burn in there, for sure. You can't really see, you know, it's smokeless. It's windy, but it's pretty protected from wind gusts. Now we could let it hang out there, but we want to juice the system and get it hot in here. So, we'll put more wood on it. It's a nice burn. Let's see how it's going. Yeah, nothing too crazy. There we go. So that's gonna that's gonna go up significantly. Um, let's do something fun. Let's turn the radiator off. And let's see what happens. I'm sorry, not the radiator, the pump. There's a spike that I predicted happening by turning the pump off. Let's turn the fan off and see what happens. That will get the reservoir temperature up pretty darn quickly. I'm gonna get more wood. It should hit a little steady state any second now. And that'll be good. That's the nice breeze coming off of this. Nice. And it's a nice gentle breeze. The fans were a little underpowered, so I juiced one of them up to 12 volts and left the other one at five. Oh, it's so nice though. It's loud. Ooh, that's, it's, it's, it's really warm. Come back with me. This is, this is a good steady state. It's increasing by 47 degrees and then cooling by 44. It's working. <laughs> it's freaking working. <laughs> it's working. <sighs> wow. So this has been a crazy project that has been way more complex than I originally thought it would be. But it was a fun project. I got to go from being a bad welder to a less bad welder. I got to learn how to work with copper pipe. I got to learn how to program an asynchronous web server that uses Google Charts APIs. Now, I didn't spend much time on that because I think that would bore the heck out of most people. 
But the most fun part of this project was not making something that worked, it was making a tool to measure whether or not something I made was working. It's been fun. I'm Dan, thanks for watching the first episode of Gears Code and Fire. And they'll play some power chords or something like that. Like something like down, 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 down.